morning and welcome to autumn and welcome to our spice pumpkin loaves i'm going to make mini loaves because i want to give them away for friends right now because it just speaks of the season so beautifully now you can make two large loaves out of it if you choose to do that and then you've got nice pumpkin spice bread or if you want to do cupcakes that's also nice so i'm going to do this and then I'm going to do a nice little frosting on the top and it's going to be delicious. So let's get started. Oh, and by the way, if you're enjoying the series, hit subscribe, hit subscribe. I love it when you guys do that and then you can come back all the time and hit the bell so you know when we, when we videotape. Okay. In my sifter here, I have got two cups of flour and then I have one half teaspoon of salt one teaspoon of baking soda, one half teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of cloves. Now, I wanna to talk to you about the cloves. I didn't have any ground cloves, so I went to the store, and much to my amazement, McCormick's, Shilling, all of the top brands, for this little, little container, um, they were 12 to $15, and I'm going, that's like outrageous. Do I really need it? Well, you can't make this without it. But I kind of kept looking. And we have Albertsons and Vons in our area, but it's also part of Safeway. So if you have any of those stores, their signature brand, look at this, you guys, $2.95. I was so excited to find it for $2.95. All right, the so cinnamon is one teaspoon and nutmeg. Now, it calls for one teaspoon of nutmeg. I have no idea. I do this until my fingers get tired, but I like the fresh nutmeg. I really do. I think it's much better. So I use fresh nutmeg whenever I'm making like um, uh, an Alfredo sauce. I, I think it really, really adds a lot to it. So I just do it like this and just hope I have enough. But I also know I don't have a teaspoon in here. I'm just not willing to do this for the next 15 minutes. And I put this all into my sifter here because I want to be sure that all of the spices, because there's some pretty potent spices in here, and I want to make sure that they're all incorporated nicely. All right. Now all we're going to do is just sift this through. Do your best to keep it in the bowl, unlike what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know if I enjoy making this because I love the smell of it, or I enjoy having a piece of this with my tea, because it is so delicious. And I got this recipe. I hope you guys ask your friends for recipe. My dear neighbor, who I love in totally, um, Heather, made these and brought some up to cameraman and I, and I went, oh, wow, I need that recipe. I've had a lot of um, recipes for pumpkin spice, but I don't think I've ever had one this good. So now in my mixing bowl, I have one and a half cups of softened butter, and I have two cups of sugar. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cream it. And that means nothing more than just allowing it to become incorporated. Now, if you haven't softened the butter, it's not going to really make much of a difference, except it's gonna take it longer for it to incorporate. Not to worry, though. This is such a fast, fast recipe to put together. I love it. The cameraman probably loves it more because I'm sure his arms get tired. And yes, I know about tripods, <laughs> but I don't know how to get one to work with my iPad. You want to scrape down the sides, just like that. And then hopefully with the mixer off, 
you will incorporate one egg at a time with the mixer off. Let them see how nice, and maybe I could just bring it out. Well, no, that's harder. Can you get in for them to see that, or is it too hard? Mm -hmm. Do you see how nice and fluffy that is right now? So nice, so nice. Now, to this, we are going to add 15 ounces of 100% pure pumpkin. I like Libbings. I think that they put out an excellent product. And I use this for pumpkin pies. I use it for, you know, pumpkin anything that I might be doing. Now, at this point, we just want to take our flour mixture we do not want to over beat it at this time. We just want to blend it. sure you always get to the bottom of that bowl because there's always stuff that wants to stick down there. Get all that good stuff off of there. Okay, now we are ready to fill these little puppies. Uh, <clears throat> they're nice little mini loaf pans, which I really think are cute, and they're perfect for a little gift. They really are. I've not made them in this before, so I'm not quite sure how many I'll be able to get out of this. But we're going, uh, first of all, what I did is I did butter and uh, flour this, because I want to make sure they're all going to come out. So we're just going to see about how many we can get. I'm trying to get them evenly distributed here so that the baking time is the same on all of them. Use a little spatula because I want to be sure they get down into the corners there. Whoa, what's this big old glob doing here? That doesn't belong there. And use a little bit more. I don't want any air pockets in those corners. And also when you smooth it out like this, you're able to really see that you have even distribution of batter. Did you see how quick this came together? <laughs> I love it. Now I have set my oven at 325, so it has been preheated. And we're gonna get one more out of this. Yippee. So this recipe actually calls for two eight by four loaf pans, if you choose to do it that way. Okay, well we ended up with seven of them, which I think is gonna be really nice because cameraman and I will have one, and then we have many more to share with friends and neighbors and welcome them to the autumn season. So I'm going to pop these in the oven. Now, if you're doing a loaf pan, it says 60 to 70 minutes if you're doing the, uh, the full loaf. Obviously, these are gonna cook quicker than that, so I'm going to uh, set my timer for like 45 minutes, and then I'm gonna start checking at 45 minutes to see where we are. So I will be back when we are baked. All right, so moving the little puppies, I thought it would be easier to just put them in the oven because what I'm going to do at about halfway through, I'm gonna just check them, I will rotate them. So I think it's gonna be easier to do that <laughs> than to rotate every one of those guys. All right, here they go. They look good. Okay, go do something. 
something fun. Well, we ended up um, cooking these, baking these little pumpkin uh, loaves for 60 minutes and then tested them with a toothpick, pulled them out of the oven, and we have let them cool completely. Now, I left one because I wanted to show you to be very careful. Also, if you're counting, two are missing. Cameraman. I know he did it. Anyway, right? Right. <laughs> He's not admitting anything. So anyway, what you want to do is you want to take a knife and just kind of go around the edges, make sure that everything is loosened up as it should be, but you might need to get in there and encourage a little bit so that when you do this, ah, that's what you get. Okay. So now it's time for us because these are completely cooled and we're going to make some um, frosting for the top of them. I have one cup of powdered sugar in here, which has been sifted. You don't want lumps in this. And then we do want to have a little bit of added flavor. So we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of water. And we'll see how that does. And we may have to do a little bit more. I'm putting another half teaspoon of water. Teaspoon. See, I don't mind taking them little bits at a time because if you put in too much at one time, then you're adding them more, more sugar, more, you go back and forth. So I'd rather do just a little bit at a time. And then you just judge what consistency you want it to be. Just smooth this out a little bit. Now, I want to tell you I left this one unglazed because I like them unglazed. But the truth of the matter is I didn't make enough. So this one's going to stay unglazed and that's okay too. Now I have some slivered almonds. If you like slivered almonds, they're lovely on here. And they're nice if they're roasted, I mean toasted. They're nice that way as well. And if you don't like them that way, now right now cameraman is getting really nervous because I'm down to the last one. And he doesn't like almonds on his. And he's wondering, oh, is she going to put it on that last one? No, I'm not because that one's yours, cameraman. Mm -hmm. All righty. So, I have got a drip um, under here so I don't have a mess on my counter. So I'm gonna clean up my mess a little bit and then we're gonna have a cup of tea and one of these beauties. How does that sound? I think it sounds pretty darn good. All right, time to clean up. We're done. We are complete except for tasting this amazing little pumpkin spice loaf that we made. Now, is there anything better than having a beautiful pastry and a wonderful cup of tea to go with it. So, here we go. I want a little bit of that frosting and a beautiful taste. It's divine. It's really, really moist. Oh, that pumpkin 
the clove, the cinnamon coming through. Wow. This is a keeper. Okay, this is definitely an autumn keeper. So, you guys, you enjoy your time in the kitchen making this. I love to put on beautiful music. I love to just really enjoy the time in the kitchen. It's hard when you're working and you're under stress and trying to get a dinner out and whatever that might be. But when you can take a little bit of time and do something like this, it's just pleasurable. I think it makes life beautiful. So thank you so much. Please subscribe. Hit the little bell so you'll know when we come back. Obviously, I'm putting ingredients below. So thank you so much. Come back and see us again. Bye. It was good, Jim.